Okay, my math genius friends, buckle up your seat belts for this lesson. This is a little bit difficult, but I think you'll get it. We're going to work a whole lot of problems together. What we're doing today is simply changing an improper fraction into a mixed number. Now, we've done it several times. Like Mr. Walker said, we're, this is nothing new, but I want to show it to you three different ways today. I'm going to tell you on your homework, whichever way is easiest to you, do it all that way. I want you to do whichever way you can find the answer easiest. So we'll look at three different ways. The first way here, we're going to look at it on a number line and, uh, and do it that way. So let's look at this first problem. We have to have 11 thirds. So I've gone ahead and drawn my number line. I've got all the way to four, from zero to four. And we're going to split it into thirds. We're going to take each. Oh, my. That wasn't very even. Sorry. All right. So I've got one third, two third, three thirds. That's not even. Sorry. Three thirds. But I've got to go all the way to 11. Four thirds, five thirds, six thirds, seven thirds, eight thirds, nine thirds, ten thirds, eleven thirds. So we know one is three thirds, two would be six thirds, three would be nine thirds, and then we've got one, two thirds more. So how many do I have all together whole numbers? I've got three and one, two thirds more. So that's how you would do this on a number line. You'd have to draw it out like that and see how many whole numbers you have. We couldn't go to four. We didn't get all the way to four, did we? We got all the way to three. So that's why I wrote three. And then I wrote two, one, two thirds more. Okay, there's one way. We're going to look at two more problems doing it this way. So this time we have 12 fifths. So I have to divide my number line into fifths. So one two, three, four, try to make it more even this time. One, two, three, four. I didn't really do that, but I tried. Okay, now we got fifths, so let's do our fifths here. One fifth, two fifth, three fifths, four fifths. We know five fifths is one. Six fifths, seven fifths, eight fifths, nine fifths. We know that 10 fifths would be two, 10 divided by five, it's two. And we've got to go to 12 fifths, remember? So 11 fifths, 12 fifths. So we went all the way as in whole numbers, we could go all the way to two right here. We didn't make it to three, but we went to two. So we went all the way to two. Then how many more fifths were there? There were one fifth, two fifths more. Okay, next one, 13 halves. So I'm going to split all of these into halves, which we're just going to put a halfway mark between each one. Again, forgive my inconsistent <laughs> shape, the length of my little numbers here. It's hard to do freehand. So now we've got to go 13 halves. So here's one half. So one half, two halves, two halves is one. Three halves, four halves is two. Five halves, six halves is three. Seven halves, eight halves is four. Nine halves, ten halves is five. Whoops. Eleven halves, twelve halves is six. But I've got to go one more. Thirteen halves. Okay. So now I've gone thirteen halves. Now let's see how far we went in the whole numbers. We went all the way to one, two, three, four, five. We went all the way over here to the six, and that was 12 halves. So we got six, but then we went one half further than six. <coughs> Excuse me. So we went six and one half. Now, that is one way to find the answer when you've got these uh, improper fractions to find the mixed number. Okay. That is one way, but what do you have to do? You've got to draw, you've got to make a lot of drawings and you've got to, uh, and that's fine, that's good. If you want to work at 
That way you just got to do a drawing each time. Let's look at it a different way. And this is the way that we were looking at yesterday when we were <clears throat> working on these. And so it's finding um, number bonds. And we could use a number line, but I'm not going to on this one. I'm going to show you a different way. So what we did yesterday is we decomposed them into parts until we found how many we needed to get 11 thirds on this case. So we know we can split them into whole parts. So 3 thirds would be 1. 3 thirds more, that's 3 plus 3 is 6, that's 2. 3 thirds more would be 3, 1, 2, 3. And that's 6 plus 3 is 9. 9 plus how many more would give me 11? I would still need 2 thirds more. So if you want to decompose them and break them down, you could say 3 plus 3 plus 3 is 9, 10, 11 thirds. So this represents 11 thirds this way. Of course, 3 thirds represents 1, 3 thirds is 1, 3 thirds is 1. So here is 1, 2, 3. So I'll have the whole number 3. And then I have 2 thirds more. Now think about this. If we had drawn a number line and we would have gone like that, 3 thirds, we would have gone to 1. 3 thirds more, we would have gone to 2. 3 thirds more, we would have gone to 3. And then we'd have had 2 thirds past the 3. So it's the same idea. It's just kind of without drawing the number line, it's kind of decomposing them, breaking them down until you get that top numerator number. So this time we got to work in halves. And we've got nine halves. So we've got to keep doing halves until we get the two halves to be one until we get to nine. So two halves is one. Two halves plus two halves would be four halves. Two halves plus two halves plus two halves would be six halves. Two halves plus two halves plus two halves plus two halves. There's eight halves. Okay, but how many more do we need? We need one half more because we got to get to nine halves. So two, four, six, eight, nine halves. So now what do we do? Will we see how many holes we have? We've got all of these are whole numbers, right? Two halves is one. So all those represent one. So one, two, three, we have four holes, and then we have one half more. Again, this is just <clears throat> one of the ways we can do it if we don't want to draw a number line. If we drew a number line, it would be, we would go on like one, two halves would be one, one, two halves would be two, one, two halves would be three, and then four, and then we would have had one half more to get all the way to nine halves. All right, 17 fourths. Let's split her up here. Okay, remember we're doing this and breaking it apart, decomposing it right now into fourths so we can make whole numbers. So four fourths and four fourths, that's eight. Four fourths, three times four would be 12. Four times four would be 16 fourths. And we need one more, so we need one fourth more. All right, so four plus four is eight, plus four is 12, plus four is 16, plus one is 17. So there are my 17 fourths. How many holes do we have? We have one, two, three. We have four hole numbers, four holes, because all these represent one, remember? And then we have one fourth more. So our answer is four and one fourth. So there's a second way that you can do it. And that was the ways that Mr. Walker showed you. I don't think he showed you this way. He showed you the number line. But this is just another way that we have been working on. So if you want to do it this way, you can. And then that Khan Academy video that you watched, it showed you even a different way. And that was to set up these fractions, improper fractions, as division numbers. So if you like to divide, maybe you'll like this. So this is 9 divided by 4. So 2 times 4 is 8. We subtract and we get 1. So that means two whole numbers, and then we have one fourth left over. Whatever your remainder is, that's how many the how many fourths in this case you have over. The next one, the remainder would be how many fifths you have left over. This would be how many sixths you have left over, and so on. 
So let's look at the next one. 17 divided by 5. Make sure you put your top number inside the box and divide by the bottom number. What's this? 17 divided by 5 would be 3 because 3 times 5 is 15. Sister subtract, 17 minus 15 is 2, so that means our whole number is 3, because 5 goes into 17 3 times, but we would have 2 fifths left over. Again, this is just the third way you can find the answer to these, turn them into uh, mixed numbers. Whichever way you like best today is the way you, are, you can do it. But really, what, if you think about it, we're, we're putting them in groups again. Um, of there's three five fifths in 17 fifths is what it is, and there would be two fifths more. How many six six would there be in 25? Well, I know that four times six is 24, and I subtract and I have one left over. So there would be four six six, and then I would have one six more. What are you, which way are you liking best so far? It's really up to you how you want to do it. 37 this is 30 divided by 7. If you know your facts, this way it's pretty easy. 4 times 7 is 28. 30 minus 28 would be 2. So that means I would have 4 whole and 2 sevenths left over. Make sure as you write your remainder, you always write it over your denominator. 38 eighths. You see why this way might work better sometimes? Can you imagine drawing a number line where you had to go all the way to 38 eighths, had to do 38 lines, little slashes? That would be really time consuming, wouldn't it? And so you might want to do it the other way, or you could do it this way. So if you don't know your facts, this way is hard to do. So you might need to study your facts a little bit. So I know 4 times 8 is 32. 5 times 8 would be 40, so I'm going to have to go 4. 4 times 8 is 32, and I subtract. 38 minus 32 is 6, and that means I have 4 and 6 eighths left over. I'm going to work four more like that for you. We're getting in some big numbers here, okay, because this is the way that I learned to do it when I was in school. And if you know your facts, I think it's the easiest way. 48 divided by 9. Okay. So that's going to go 5 times. 5 times 9 is 45. 48 minus 45 would be 3. So I would have 5 holes. And 3 is my remainder. So 3 ninths left over. 63 tenths would be 63 divided by 10. That's going to go six times. You could probably do this one in your head, couldn't you? 60, 63 minus 60 is three. So I'm going to have 10 will go into 63 six times with three tenths left over. Oh, these are easy when we divide by 10. What times 10? How many times will 10 go into 80? It would go eight times, wouldn't it? Then how many would be left over? Four tenths. I didn't even divide, just divided my head in that one. I can't do it on this one, though. Well, I could, but I don't know if you can. So what times 12 would give me 37? 37 divided by 12. 3 times 12 is 36. All right. 36 minus, 37 minus 36 is 1. So my answer is 3 holes and 1 twelfth left over. All right, so I've shown you three different ways you can do these today. If you want to draw the number line, and like we did it here, split your, uh, 11, do 11 thirds and see how many you get to. Well, that's fine. If you want to draw that out, that takes a lot of work. You're welcome to do it, though. If you want to decompose them into different little pieces until you get the top numerator, that's fine if you want to do it that way. Or if you want to divide them. You can do it that way. So three different ways that you can do your homework today. Whichever one you think is the easiest for you, the which one you understand the best is how I would do my homework that way today. Okay? I'll let you get started. Please ask me any questions you have in the Google Meet this afternoon. See you then.